So, well, a very good afternoon, um, everyone. Uh, we meet here today in Zoom, considering the health and well-being of the residents of West Berkshire. So for many of us, life is good. I live about a mile away from my office where I am now. I've got a lovely home. I've got a lovely garden. I've got a vocational job. My social life is active. Well, it was active and positive, and I do quite a bit of voluntary work and community work aside of my work for the Volunteer Centre. So I consider myself as making a positive contribution to my district, as I'm sure all of you do too. We have a stake in what goes on because we get involved and therefore we have a right to have some say in what goes on. Yet a mile away from here, there are families who are disenfranchised from some of the opportunities that most of us may take for granted disenfranchised perhaps due to their lack of means, uh, their upbringing, consequential poor social mobility in a zero hour contract world and a minimum wage society that renders hardworking people unable to rent without state support, let alone buy a home. It's their well-being that the voluntary and charitable world exists for in large measure. There are people who have no or rather don't know how to have a say in a way that may improve their circumstances. I suppose they might be more concerned about topping up their electricity card tonight for the weekend. So as we zoom here today, today, right now, usually there'd probably be about 200 organizations working across West Berkshire right now. We've perhaps erroneously, but very well intentionally described what they do as a thousand small acts of kindness. And they are small for some of the people, but actually during the COVID crisis, there will have been 100,000 or 200,000 acts of kindness we know that there will have been at least 3,000 people assisting their communities in some important way. As volunteers, yes, but it, it's more accurate to uh, describe them as good neighbours, uh, caring citizens, empathetic human beings, at the time of probably the greatest crisis for the UK since World War II. We think there's about 85 groups that have formed or emerged from, from nothing some quite big like the Hungerford or field groups or tiny ones with a group of 20 or so people on a WhatsApp group in a little hamlet somewhere. The Volunteer Centre, where I am now, we, we transformed our own operational methods and created quite a sophisticated Google mapping system to be able to meet the urgent needs of the Newbury Town residents with our population of 35,000 and the 300 or so volunteers that we were using. So we know there's really nothing small about those acts of kindness maybe small for those people that undertook them, but there were big acts of kindness for the people that received them. The anxiety levels of an elderly couple needing food and prescriptions were running incredibly high. We enjoyed some wonderful conversations with very elderly residents who had never been on the radar of any social care system in their lives. And they were so grateful to be able to have a chat with, with people and have their urgent needs met. Residents just came out and responded to a very obvious need. Residents on foot with rucksacks carrying 10 items of shopping and five prescription items, queuing 150 yards outside Boots, the chemist for prescriptions. Residents on bikes whizzing across the town. In the very depths of the crisis, it was like a real wartime spirit and the emotional rewards were really tangible for those both inside the offices administering this handing out the jobs, those of us in call centres. It was just wonderful hearing the comments and some quite interest, sometimes quite interesting demands from people. Powerful stuff. On an ordinary working day, COVID aside, as Kamal has alluded to, Shane in Hungerford at the Landborn Volunteer Group would be driving a few people to hospital, the doctors. Couldn't be Volunteer Bureau would be doing the same. So to the Newbury Community Car Scheme, to appointments of all kinds, the Downland Volunteer Group, the Chapel Road Community Service Group, Thatcham Community Transport Office, Burfield and Mortimer Volunteer Bureau, Field Standby, the Pangborn and District Volunteer Centre, the Cancer Care Trust, all volunteers. Handybus volunteers taking people on shopping trips or manner of places to sustain community participation, dispel loneliness that so often accompanies old age. Homestart. Homestart volunteers, as we sit here right now, will be listening to families who are struggling with life. People struggling to pay bills and navigate a complex online world with little or no human interaction. Volunteers with Flag DV may be listening to a domestic abuse story and keeping women and children safe. 
Berkshire Vision might be preparing for three blind clubs this week in Newbury, Thatcham and Hungerford. Stroke Care will be helping stroke victims to recover and mobilise. The West Berkshire Therapy Centre will be seeing around 30 people, providing real rehabilitation for people with all manner of physical and neurological conditions, just to help people mobilise and maintain some independence in their own homes. The furniture, the furniture project will be doing amazing things. So too the food banks, loose ends, soup kitchen, West Berkshire homeless, all done by volunteers. Volunteer befrienders be visiting people. Samaritans will be listening to people who may be suicidal. Cruise bereavement care will be doing just that, listening to and giving strength to the bereaved. Tonight, Relate, just up the road, will be helping to hold a marriage together. This afternoon and this evening, Time to Talk will be listening to young people maybe about their self-harm or, or concerns about their, their examination results. Thames Valley Kings will be engaging wheelchair basketball players in highly competitive sport. Citizens Advice Bureau will be incredibly, dealing with incredibly complex debt problems for people. Parish councillors are volunteers, school governors are volunteers, scouts and guides, environmental groups, heritage groups, all of them contributing to the well-being of their community because they want to and they've identified the need. I've merely touched on a tiny number of organisations within our district, of which there are around about 500 very active ones. The Volunteer Centre places about 350 volunteers a year with small, medium and large organisations. We've currently got about 400 opportunities on our system. You can take a look online at our big list. Before, we, um, before COVID, we undertook a valuing volunteering survey and we recorded 6,000 active volunteers in West Berkshire. So beyond the beautiful, exquisite images of, of West Berkshire that we've been looking at and the nice homes and cars and great holidays that some of us enjoy, for a significant number of us, of us, life is a real struggle and the voluntary sector is there to meet those needs because they want to. I could take you now to homes where there's no carpet on the floor, there might be a mattress on the ground, there's, there's no sofa, where there are kids with nothing on their feet, you might be watching the telly, listening to rows and foul language, with a waft of cannabis in the air. Not long ago, I stood in front of 150 children in a primary school to talk to them about kindness and helping others. In front of me, in the front row, a little lad had fallen asleep and he'd wet himself on the assembly floor. I was told afterwards by the very caring staff that it was likely that he hadn't slept the night before. And I do worry what happens and what lays before that little lad later in life. And this is why charities like ABC to Read exist, to add value to a pressurised state system. But back to the here and now, we're fairly sure that around 3,000 volunteers were actively helping with about 85 or so COVID response groups that we knew about. There will have been many more people who were simply helping uh, a near or a next door neighbour because they wanted to. The common denominator being that they were all believed in neighbourliness, they all believed in self-help, acts of human kindness and that we should all be looking out for one another. So professionally I know it's reasonable to assume that we do care very much for one another but we have a question to put today. This is why, this, this is why we're all here today. Do we need to wait for another, uh, another emergency before we reawaken the, the very obvious latent care that came out and was well demonstrated within our district and districts all over the country, actually. Or will it simply re-emerge again, as I, as I believe it will, if the lockdown reappears and becomes absolute? So what practical measures could we embark upon to create an even greater reliance within our own communities, self-reliance? What is the long-term role of the state insofar as adult social care is concerned? So we're here today to ask a number of questions of ourselves. What does health and well-being mean for us? What does it mean for our families and our friends, our loved ones? What does health and well-being mean for your street? What does it mean for your hamlet, your village, your conurbation over in the east of the district, your estate or your own town? What can we do as individuals? What can we do as organised groups? What can the authorities do? What about the well-being of our own minds? What about the well-being of our own workplaces, our shopping spaces, our leisure spaces? Big questions. So I, I thank you all for being here today. I, I urge you not to hold back on your responses. 
whatever breakout group that you, you're, you're joining in, do make your thoughts and your ideas known because a discrete idea or a discrete thought is a wasted one. It's your community. It's our own well-being we're discussing today. So if you aren't already and you want to become involved, I think you've come to the right conference. So I'm going to say now and finish, make a difference and enjoy the session. Thank you. Thank you.